Fantastic. Everybody, please welcome Dr. Michael Maro, who's an orthopedic surgeon. Hi. Hi, Dr. Maru. Hello. How are you today? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Please have a seat. Welcome Thank to you. Better Living. Mm -hmm. It's a pleasure to have you here. Mm -hmm. Imagine only one person has broken a bone in this audience. I can't believe it. They look, they look so young. I'm they sure do, they do. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're young and, and it's a good thing. They've been yes. taking care of themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, before we get into the, in the nitty gritty of orthopedics, um, tell us a little bit about yourself and what got you into that very interesting field. Okay, my name is uh, Dr. Michael Maru. I'm a North Pedic surgeon. Yeah. Um, most people don't know what is orthopedic surgery because, you know, we talk more about general surgery than uh, orthopedic surgery. What we do is, once you become a doctor, you decide whether you want to be a physician or you want to be a surgeon. So you do general surgery, and then from there you decide whether you want to be a bone surgeon or a neurosurgeon or a cardiothoracic surgeon. So I decided to go into bone surgery because okay. my name is Maru, yeah. and it has a bearing to that name. Maru in Kikuyu means? Bones. Bones. And specifically, not quite bones, yeah. means the knee joint. The knee joint. Mm. Okay. Now looking, uh, and, and, uh, looking at Kenya and looking at the number of cases that you've handled, uh, give us an overview as to where the need is uh, specifically when it comes to ortho. I think without doubt we have to mention that the commonest uh, orthopedic problems that we get is uh, fractures, mm -hmm. mainly due to uh, motorbike accidents. And of course those are the young, the young generation because they use motorbikes more. And then in the older patients, it's uh, arthritis. Right. Mm. Okay, now speaking, of course, about injury. Uh, a lot of people have injured themselves, but you just don't know. You feel, uh, you feel a little bit of pain with, uh, with bone and, and joint issues. But somehow, sometimes it goes away, or mm. it just kind of becomes a part of your everyday. Um, talk to us a little bit about what happens when you injure uh, a part of your body that affects your bones. Okay, we, we, you know, we get injuries all the time. You, know, you, you, walk, you walk into um, obstacles and hurt yourself. But the minute you injure your limbs, especially the lower limbs, and you can't wait bare, then you know there's a serious injury. Okay. If, you, if, you, if you injure your upper, upper limbs, you call them the upper limbs, they get swollen, then you need to get medical attention okay. in form of seeing a, 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 an orthopedic surgeon. All oh, right. Yeah. The, um, the treatment sometimes, it sounds very scary, right? when you hear about treatment of ortho uh, and surgery beca uh, because of either an injury that you've experienced, take us through a little bit of the treatment of various injuries or various conditions that a lot of people face. Okay, let's say, uh, let's talk about like uh, someone on a motorbike and then they get head-on collision with, um, let's say, a motor vehicle. Mm -hmm. um, they get most of the commonest injuries they get is around the knee because you know the way you're sitting on a motorbike, the rider almost suddenly avoids the injury most of the time. But you are at the back, you cannot see what is happening at the front. Mm -hmm. And studies have shown that the reason why they get knee injuries is because once you swerve, your knee is the one that is high risk to get hit. Right. So they break their bones, especially the long bones. This long bone in the, in, in the leg is called the femur. Okay. So that's what they, so it breaks. So obviously you have to be taken to hospital. And then we go and pull it. Uh, we, t we put some, what we call traction. Mm -hmm. And then we plan for surgery and we normally put a rod in the middle of the bone in the, in the medullary canal. Wow, yeah. painful. Well, it will be painful, yeah. but once you do, during the operation, they are put out so they are, they are not in pain. Okay, mm. um, I know a lot of uh, ortho injuries and a lot of ortho treatment does involve physio afterwards. Yes. Um, take us through that stage of it, because a lot of people are not able to actually use their motor skills anymore if you've gone through major surgery, as you're talking about. Yes, I think uh, once you get the surgery, then our work as orthopedic surgeons ends there. That patient has to get back to society, get back to their job. So they need rehabilitation, mm -hmm. and that starts with the physiotherapist. Okay. So they are taught how to use crutches, they are taught how to move their limbs, so that you can get them back to their, the level they were before the injury. Okay, mm -hmm. now one of, uh, one of the most common injuries or uh, pain issues of, of sources of pain are back pain. Uh, a lot of people suffer back pain. I have some back issues sometimes. Um, talk to us about uh, what actually causes back pain, treatment, or sometimes there's actually no treatment. Yes, uh, back pain is quite common. In fact, one of the most commonest uh, conditions we see in the outpatient's clinic because it tends to affect all, uh, the whole age, age spectrum, yeah. starting from about the age of 30 uh, to even up to 70. The younger patient, uh, between 30 and 50, most of the time is due to posture. Uh, poor lifting, mm -hmm. poor lifting technique. Uh, so 
they want to lift something heavy like this in the construction industry yeah. and the posture the way they lift it isn't right and therefore they get a back injury for the older patients like from uh, 60 to 80 those ones it tend to be arthritis of the back okay. so therefore the bones in the back get arthritic and they get pain Right. Arthritis is a big deal, arthritis, yes. isn't it? Uh, yes. Affects a lot of people. What is arthritis? Let's start there. Arthritis. Um, the word arthritis comes is a. Is, it means actually joint. Okay. Now, when you say arthritis, is inflammation of the joint. There are different types of arthritis. There, there are about five types. Okay. We talk about the because it's that common. The first one that we talk about is a, what we call osteoarthritis. Okay. Is the one that comes with age. So as you get older, the lining of the joint wears off. Like any other, it's, it's, the joint is like a bearing, you know, the, the more you use it, the more it's likely to wear off. So from the age of about 40, it starts wearing off and then the cartilage goes away, the cartilage that lines the joint, and therefore you get arthritis. So bone starts rubbing on the other bone, mm -hmm. and that is called arthritis. That comes with age. There's another type of arthritis where you get infection, like you can get, you can get pus in the joint. Mm -hmm. That we call that septic arthritis, where there's infection inside the joint. It's common in children because they get, you know, they hurt themselves. Or arthritis they, can affect children? Yes, it can affect that type of arthritis. Okay. Yes. Okay. Then there's another one called gout arthritis that tends to affect those people who like to enjoy it. In gout, yes. exactly. and beer. And beer, okay. especially the red meat yeah. and beer. So they get, that's gout arthritis. And then there's one called rheumatoid arthritis, which sometimes can be genetic, results in deformation of the limbs. So they get severe hand deformities. They can't even lift something with their hands. Yeah. That is a different type of arthritis. Okay. Mm. How painful and degrees of pain uh, and managing that pain, uh, particularly with arthritis. And the older uh, demographic, talk to us a little bit about that because there's so many people up country, uh, grandparents who are suffering uh, and it seems like there's nothing that can be done. Is there? Well, there's always something that can be done with this uh, uh, condition called arthritis yeah. because I say it depends on what type of arthritis it is. We said the older patients is osteoarthritis so it's wear and tear. Those ones you manage them with painkillers and if it's affecting their main joints like the knee and the hip joint sometimes you do something called a hip or knee replacement. Okay. So you, you change the joint to put in a metal joint yeah. therefore the bone does not rub on bone okay. and therefore the pain goes away. Okay. If, if it's children then we treat them with antibiotics. If it's septic, if it's where they pass in the joint we wash it out give them antibiotics and that clears. Okay, so it is treatable? It's treatable, yes. And you, you can actually get arthritis and get rid of it? Yeah, yeah you can. You can okay. get rid of it, depends on what type. But the older, the osteoarthritis, you can only control the pain with painkillers. But once that arthritis sets in, that one you cannot reverse that process. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, joint uh, replacement or bone replacement is a big deal. Um, when, when do you find a case of somebody who actually needs to re be replaced? When do you make that sort of decision? To start with, there has to be an older patient. We don't put them in uh, younger patients because mm -hmm. the lifespan of that, you see the implants, the lifespan of that implant is about 15 to 20 years. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to put it in a patient who is in their 20s because by the time they are 40, it has become loose and you have to do it again. Okay. So we like to do service for about 60 years and we put it in patients who have tried other methods of treatment like painkillers, physiotherapy, and it hasn't succeeded. So this is sort of the last resort? The last resort. Okay. Absolutely. Yes. I'm going to ask our dear Grace, uh, who is such a helper. Can we clap for Grace? Is this your Grace? Please come over here. We have some, uh, we have some replacements here um, that the good doctor brought for us. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you, doll. Okay. okay. Now, thank you. If you could, do you want to take us through these so that we can see okay. this, so we can see exactly what yes. they are? Yes. So we start with um, what you call a knee replacement. Okay. Um, so I said we change the knee joint. And uh, these are the Wait implants. For a is this what the knee looks like? It, well, this is the this is the implant we use for knee replacement okay. when you're changing the knee. Okay. The knee doesn't look like this yeah. in a normal in a normal human being. Okay. But this is what we use. Okay. That, so that's your camera over there. Okay. If that's you want good. to show them, yeah. Yes. So. This is the implant that we put in the bone at the bottom here. It's oh. called the uh, tibia. Okay. So we, 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 there are ways of preparing the bone so that you can put this in. We hold it with cement. And this cement is uh, is it's called bone cement, not the cement we use for uh, making uh, buildings no, or no, construction no. industry. Okay. This is bone cement. Uh, we put it here and then we put it in the bone marrow. Mm -hmm. And that holds it there. And then we come and put in um, uh, what we call a plastic insert. That sits in there. And then... The this top. looks so painful. Yes. Doesn't and then it? at the top, uh, in the femur, yeah. we put in this. This is expensive material. We, this is a, 
obviously made in a way that it's Can it's a, the body does not react to it. It is heavy. That is for a, for a big man. It's smaller ones for for smaller patients. Okay. Yes. Can, can you see this? Okay. So that's what we use. Okay, sorry. Let me just show it to the camera right yeah. there. Mm -hmm. There. There you go, Billy. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. So this is what we put in there. Again, we hold it with bone cement. Okay. And there for now, from then on, this is the type of movement that will be occurring. Oh. When you straighten your knee, it goes straight. When you bend your knee, it's like that. And this is what we call a, a, knee a total knee replacement. Okay. So this is actually what's inside someone's this knee? This is what is inside someone's knee. Okay. Wow. Oh. Um, and are you able to walk normally with yes. this kind of replacement? Yes, because you know that they can bend their knee to just like I'm um, seated here. Okay. And they can straighten the knee out just like that. All right. And uh, because bone is not touching bone, the pain goes away. Okay. Because bone rubs on bone, but bone rubbing on bone causes pain. How many surgeries do you have to go to for, for a hip or a knee replacement? Um, how, how do you mean? I mean, is how it just one surgery? One surgery, yes. It's one takes surgery. about an hour, one hour. Really? It takes about an hour to one and a half hours. Okay, it's a lot, you're making it sound a lot easier than, yeah. than, I, th than I thought. Okay, yeah. fantastic. You have some more stuff there? Yeah, so that's in me. Okay. So we come to the hip joint. Uh, this is the metal we use for the hip joint. Okay. As you can see, uh, these ones were made of uh, stainless steel, mm -hmm. very highly polished, yeah. uh, so that it doesn't react with the body. Okay. Again, we put it at the top here, at the what's top the of metal? the fiber. What's a metal? Stainless steel. Stainless steel. And some of them are made from titanium. Okay. Which is inert, doesn't react with a uh, human body. Okay. Yeah. All right. So this is the one we use. And then we put in a, so we take out the hip joint, remove the, the entire joint, okay. put this in, and the bottom of the, of the femur, and then put a head, what we call a head, and at the socket, we then link it up with a socket like that, such that after that, Ah. The patients will be moving. This is a kind of movement that will be occurring okay. uh, in the hip joint. This this needs a lot of physio, I would presume. After right? that, they have to get out of physio. They walk with crutches for six weeks okay. to allow for the for the muscles to heal and to allow for you know the whole area to become uh, uh, easier okay. for them to be able to sit and even walk. Okay. Mm. Um, are there times when the body can reject some of these uh, implants or in, a, in the case of an infection, yes. uh, what happens? I, I think uh, we have to say that all surgeries have um, some risks. Mm -hmm. One of them is, in this case here, a complication that can arise is infection. Because okay. you're putting in foreign material in the body. Sometimes the body can react to it. If the body reacts to it then, uh, uh, and you get infection, then you can get pus and sometimes you have to take the metal out to get rid of the pus. Okay. Mm. W uh, when can, when is this not a possibility for someone who needs it? Uh, is, is there, have you found patients who don't qualify because of one reason or another? A lot of patients ask, uh, I'm, I'm, say, I'm too old to have this done. Yeah. You know, they're in their 80s. We don't look at the age anymore we, because we assess the patients first, look at their heart, look at the, how well they are functioning. If they have high blood pressure, we control it. Diabetes, we control it. Okay. From there, if they are fit enough, then they get this. But there's some patients who cannot take this because they will not withstand that kind of surgery. Mm -hmm. It's about two, one, one to two hours. It's a big operation. So some patients are not able to withstand the surgery. Therefore, you cannot have this, but very few. Okay. Because anesthesia has become much more safer than it used to be. All right. Looking at, of course, the issue of access, um, expense, uh, just looking at that stuff right now, it seems very expensive yes. uh, to undertake some of this. Not all Kenyans have insurance. Not all Kenyans have access to this. Yes. Talk to us about affordability. Yes, um, obviously there are different types of this kind of an implant. There are some that come from, from Europe, there are some that come from uh, India, and some come from China now. So there are some cheaper versions of what the original implants were, and that has made it a bit become affordable to most patients. The original ones used to be very expensive, okay. like a hip replacement, an implant, you know, straightforward implant would be like 150,000, okay. or a knee replacement would be like 200,000. That is just the implant. Okay. That's why orthopedic surgery is expensive because the implant itself is expensive. And the operation isn't necessarily expensive. It isn't. Mm. Looking at, of course, where we are in Kenya, I know we have Kijabe and mm. we have Kikuyu, and yes. you operate here in Nairobi, in yes. Upper Hill. Yes. Um, is, do we need more um, orthopedic hospitals? Do we need, what do we need in Kenya so that actually it doesn't, it's not as difficult to access as, as, you, as you put it? Yes, access for orthopedic surgery is, um, is quite scarce, in, I have to say, in Kenya. Okay. And uh, the reason is because orthopedic surgery is still evolving. It used to be under general surgery, so it's still developing. Uh, we have the Kenya Orthopedic Association that is doing a lot to try and get orthopedic surgeons in the areas that require orthopedic surgery. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, we still need more hospitals, especially the referral hospitals, to do more orthopedic surgery and even bring it down to, uh, to the level four hospitals that, that will be able to deal with um, fractures and orthopedic surgery. Okay. Mm. Now, uh, interesting story. Do you guys remember the story of Mwende, who was in a, a, a domestic situation where she lost her limbs? Do you remember that story? Actually, you remember that story. I do, I do. Okay, so tell me when you first heard it, what you thought about her. This woman lost both her limbs. But the first time I heard about the story was when I was reading the Sunday, Sunday Nation. Yeah. Then I saw a picture of her, you know, wrapped up, um, a story about, about her, and uh, they said that they, she has smelly wounds because she has been cut and not treated. So we said, we bring her to Kikuyu and uh, see whether we can we can improve on the, fa uh, we can f refashion the stumps okay. because you know they are infected because the bones were still out. So we, we cover it with muscle to form a stump that then can accept a prosthesis. Okay. So that was the idea. And you know, we don't have expensive prosthesis. We have the cosmetic prosthesis. Okay. And those ones are just to put it in. But you undertook this pro bono to try yes. and help this woman and we give did, her uh, arms. Yes. Yeah, okay. But uh, after that, I think uh, LG Electronics um, found, found out about the story and they said they would give her even better process than what we would have offered. We don't have those kind of processes in Kenya, yeah. and that is an area that needs to be looked into. Electric processes that allows them to even wash their face, hold a cup. Okay. So they took her to South Korea and, uh, and did the good job. For Fantastic. Her, for Fantastic. A new lease, definitely a new lease of life. Uh, I think we take a lot for granted. You know, you're healthy, you've got your, all your limbs and all of that until something happens when yes. you realize, oh my goodness, uh, I didn't know how how important some of these motor skills are. So one, uh, before we go, we wanted to ask where you're located and, and the kind of service, services that you offer at your clinic. As I said, we, 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 we offer, we, also, we work in the entire Nairobi, as you know, yes, work in all the hospitals in Nairobi, yeah. but also work in Kikuyu. Uh, and I uh, also work here in Nairobi. We have a clinic here in uh, Upper Hill, okay. where we offer orthopedic services in a one-stop center, where we, um, we, we try and deal with all the varieties of orthopedic surgery. Okay, yes. Dr. Ari, thank you so, so much for being here this morning. Thank you for all having right. me. We are going to, of course, give you all that information about this great clinic and the great work that they are doing there. All you have to do is just log on to our social media platforms, tell us what your situation is, uh, and we will be happy to forward that to Dr. Maru. But you actually work with many other doctors. I went we through do. your website there. Yes, yes, we have yeah. quite a few there. So different the specialists. Of a different specialists. Someone okay. dealing with the foot, some dealing with the knees. I deal with the knees myself. Okay. And the hip someone else dealing with the spine. So we like to, 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 to bring all those services together. Fantastic. Give it up for Dr. Maru, everybody. Thank you. Okay, for now, we take a quick break. We'll be right back. It is a Monday, but we're saying, mm -mm, we're chasing away the blues today. Wait till you see what I'm going to make this audience do in just a couple of minutes. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Asante, Dr. Thank you. Asante. Thank you.